Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Mount Cory Church of Faith on this very special fourth Sunday of Advent, which, unlike most years, is also Christmas Eve. So that's uh, kind of exciting. It's good to see all of you. I know we have some of our people that are traveling elsewhere. Uh, we have some people that are traveling in and some people going tonight and not the morning, but hopefully before the day is out, everybody will have a chance to spend some time uh, with uh, Christ here in his church uh, this day and celebrate the way it should be. Uh, speaking of family get to for the third time in about 10 days, the parsonage was full of people yesterday. Uh, my family had our Christmas together, uh, and my mom and my sister from Florida, my dad from down Columbus, they're all here with us, so I'm glad you could be here. And uh, we can talk to you later about whether the Mike Noggle Live is as good as the Mike Noggle on the screen. So. Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll get to that later. A few announcements uh, for you uh, this morning. Um, this evening, don't forget, 7 o'clock, because it's Christmas Eve, we're having our candlelight service yet today. It will be at Pleasant View uh, at 7 o'clock. And then next Sunday, uh, which is New Year's Eve, we'll have our regular sermon, service uh, schedule. We'll be right here at 1030 uh, again next week. Um, this coming week, though, there will be, we have, uh, we will not have regular office hours. Uh, Nancy's still working primarily from home. Uh, I'm going to be doing some traveling over Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, you'll hear a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, but um, as far as uh, being in the office, uh, plan on calling either myself or Nancy before you come out. Uh, and then maybe we'll either can meet you out there at a certain time uh, during the week or um, we can handle it over the phone. But because of that, too, we're not going to be having uh, getting our newsletter out this this week, um, the last week of the month. Um, so it's going to go out the next week. We're still going to be the second or third. Uh, so I know on Wednesday and Thursday, you'll all be sitting next to your computer just waiting for it to come. And so you can read it hot off the press, but it's not going to happen this week. So you have to wait and sit around your computer next week and then you'll see it. But um, uh, but second and third, there wasn't too much uh, going to be going on uh, the first day or so of the year. So uh, we figured that wouldn't put off too many people. Um, the men's Bible study is not happening on Saturday morning, uh, the 30th. Uh, it will resume on January 6th. Uh, also, if any of you uh, have a moment after church to help put out the luminaries around the church building here, uh, please uh, just say, uh, it, it shouldn't take too long, 15 minutes or so, t or 20. The bags are pretty much ready to go. They just have to be set out. Yeah, so they'll be they'll be downstairs. We can we can meet you downstairs after the service. If there's anybody that's available for you know uh, 20 minutes or so to pick them up sometime tomorrow, let us know. Late morning, early afternoon. If not, let us know, and we can maybe uh, get some help on Tuesday uh, to get those in. Um, 
couple things as far as birth. Nathan Thomas had a birthday on Friday. And it's also Ferry Parkins, 91? 91. So I know you're listening, Ferry, so happy birthday uh, to you. Also, Stella Sherrick, I, no, she's not here this morning. Stella had a birthday uh, on yesterday, as did Diane uh, Berkey. Both of you share a birthday. And then today, Christy Marshall is having a birthday. So happy birthday to her. Um, it looks like James Houston has a birthday tomorrow on Christmas Day, a Christmas baby, right? Well, very good. All right, are there any other announcements before we begin our service this morning? It does. <laughs> on behalf of your church family here, thank you very much. And a little token for a Merry Christmas. Well, thank you. Very appreciate it. Yeah. I'm very touched. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy, will you prepare hearts and minds for worship? Thank you, Nancy. That's beautiful. Today there is good news for us to behold. Light the lamps, prepare the room. God is coming to us. Let us make our hearts and our spirits ready to receive God's power and God's most gracious gift, God's Son, Jesus Christ. Push the darkness away. The light truly is coming. May God's light shine on us and in us and through us that God's glory may be seen. Let us pray. Lord of all life and all seasons, help us open our hearts to hear the words of promise 
and love that you send to us. Like Mary and Joseph, may we trust in your abiding love and power. Prepare us to receive your gift of grace and peace, given to us in the form of a tiny baby lying in a manger, yet mindful of the fact that this special child was given as a perfect sacrificial lamb, which will take him to the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have lit three candles for hope, for peace, and for joy. Today, we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. With this flame, we signify the love of God that surrounds and fills us at all times. But this, we recognize in a special way in this Christmas story. There is no greater power than love. It is stronger than rulers and empires, stronger than grief or despair, stronger even than death. We love because, because God loves us. Loving God, we open ourselves to you this Christmas season. As these candles are lit, light our lives with your imagination. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Magnify your love within us. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Thank you. That works so much better when you put the slide in, doesn't it? <laughs> Would you please join us in our opening uh, praise hymn this morning? Sing We Now of Christmas, page three, uh, 237, verses 1 through 3 are on the screen. Uh, if you're able, to please rise in body or spirit.
And we'll continue on with What Child Is This, page 219 or on the screen. that time in our worship service where we uh, go to the Lord with our joys and concerns. I have some that I want to share with you uh, today, and then I'll open it up for any others as soon as I get my sheet out here. There it is. Anyway, uh, first of all, I uh, want to give uh, a word of praise uh, for my uh, friend, uh, Jeff Houtstein. He has been in and out of the hospital twice in the last uh, two weeks uh, with uh, cellulitis, but he did get home uh, this past, uh, I think it was Wednesday afternoon, um, and hopefully he's staying home this time, uh, but uh, he uh, is recuperating, told him that at least now Santa would know where to find him. Uh, so um, want to give a thanks for that. Also, you have thanks for uh, two people in our church who had recent surgeries. One is Sue Hall, who had surgery, uh, I believe, what was it Wednesday morning? Thursday morning, that's right, I was there. Uh, Thursday morning, they all run together after a while. Uh, and uh, Nancy and her recovery and her knee surgery, and, and both of them are doing well, and so we give praise to God for that. Uh, also, um, uh, many of you know uh, Lee Wilkins, who lived as, was a longtime member, uh, or lived in this community for a long time. He's been in the nursing home the last couple of years, I think, uh, over in Bluffton. But Lee Wilkins uh, passed away this past week, so we need to remember his family. I think he was 92 or 3, some, somewhere in there. Uh, but please remember his, his family. Also, uh, along those lines... Um, uh, my son-in-law, uh, Jared Smith, uh, lost his father uh, early on Thursday morning. Um, Mike Smith had, had a major stroke on Monday um, and uh, was made it back to the nursing home, but he was on hospice care and a DNR and hadn't uh, eaten or drank anything. And, uh, so they expected him not to last long, and he passed away um, Thursday morning. Uh, funeral and visitation will be um, on Wednesday. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I will not be around on, on Wednesday. Uh, 
Um, so uh, please remember uh, Mike Smith's family. Also, we, we do want to remember all of those who uh, find the holiday that we all celebrate with joy and lights and candles and, and presents and all that uh, a little bit difficult uh, to go through uh, because of uh, memories of how things used to be and uh, no longer are, of people who used to be around the table that are not any longer. Um, so we need to understand uh, that um, that loneliness and sadness and, and uh, are, are rampant at this time of year as well. Uh, so sometimes just a, a, a phone call or a, a loving um, touch would be very helpful in those. So let's not forget uh, those people who uh, struggle with this holiday. Are there others you'd like to share? Tim. My family and I got a praise this week. My oldest daughter, Angela, had a baby girl. The name is Ren Eleanor. She weighed six pounds, nine ounces, and she's 20 inches. I have not got my hands on her yet. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she at? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. And what day was she born? Thursday. Thursday. Very good. You know, isn't that the circle of life? Uh, one goes out on Thursday and another one comes in. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, Viola, yes. I'm thankful for my dad because he's out of work today. I know. Your dad is a fireman, and he is uh, does a wonderful job. So that's a good thing to be thankful for. Are there others? All right, will you join me in our uh, prayer hymn this morning? Away in the manger, the words are on the screen, uh, and I'm sure you know it. Father God, what a joy and a privilege it is to come into your house this morning on this very, very special day, this fourth Sunday of Advent and this Christmas Eve. We so look forward to celebrating uh, the birth of your Son, God incarnate here on earth to be with us. Lord, to help us as we go through our gatherings of food and of presence and of fellowship and of fun and parties that we don't lose track of the sight that 
this is really a birthday party for Jesus, your son. Help us as we go through this season to take a moment to reflect on just the love that it took for you to send him and the love for him to come and to serve out his purpose here on earth for us. Lord, we're grateful uh, for this season and the time we get to spend together with loved ones, both family, chosen family, church family. They're all very special. Lord, we also want to lift up all those who this morning find this holiday season a difficult one to go through. Thoughts of those who have gone before, thoughts of things that used to be and are no longer of loneliness and sadness. Lord, I just ask that you reach out and touch their hearts with your peace and your comfort because it is the very thing that we're celebrating, the gift of your son that gives them the hope and assurance of the future. That's why he came. So that we can overcome those feelings of loneliness and know that we are never alone because you're always there with us. You love us and care about us so we know that when we lift up our joys and concerns to you that we know that you hear us and trust us We know, and we trust you. We know that um, you always give us what we need. Sometimes what we want is unreasonable and you say so. But we always are given exactly what we need, exactly when we need it. And so I thank you, Lord, for your answer to prayer, for Jeff, for Nancy, and for Sue, and their healing process that they continue, and for John uh, Kuntz, and as he is now able to, to actually uh, put some uh, pressure on his uh, ankle once again. And so we thank you for the healing and all. We ask that that continue to completion. We ask you to be with uh, Brock uh, and all of the first responders uh, who uh, serve us and protect us and um, sacrifice uh, their time and their holiday time for us. And we just uh, give you thanks for um, Brock and all of his family who uh, uh, serve as well in a supporting mission. Lord, we also give you praise for new birth. That's the one that we uh, are celebrating tomorrow in Jesus, but also for Ren uh, and be with Angela and all their, her family and, and Tim and all his family as they celebrate uh, the arrival of this uh, new precious baby. And as life begins, it also does end for some. And it's difficult to go through. And it's particularly difficult when it's around this time of year. So please be with the family of Mike Smith. Be with the family of Lee Wilkins as they go through these days of a sorrow and parting. But Lord, once again, that's why you sent your son so that parting would not be permanent. That we would see them again. For all those who believe, given the free gift of eternal life. We have many people listed in our bulletins. We know that we have lifted them up to you and we can entrust them to your care. We also know there are unspoken requests on the hearts of those who are in this congregation and those who are watching online and we take a moment to lift them up to you now. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to get together. Please be with all those that are on the road and traveling over these few days, either going to family or from families. As they get together, keep them safe. And Lord, as we mentioned that you meet our needs, we acknowledge that everything we have belongs to you. 
As we came in this morning, we gave a portion of what you've given us uh, back to you. And we ask you to bless each one who gave, bless, bless the gifts, give us the wisdom to use it in a way that would be pleasing to you in furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. And most especially today, we are grateful for the gift of that little baby who came so long ago to be with us, to be God with us in our midst. And it is in the name of that Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, before you go, I need help. 
Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 8 and verse 13, and also John 3, 16. When I get to John 3, 16, I invite all of you to read that verse. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body, to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I invite you to join me in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you, Dwayne. May God bless the reading of his holy word today. And thank you, Nancy, uh, for your contribution to the service this morning. I do sense a bit of excitement in the air, and I see it on people's faces. And I'm trying to decide if it's because we've come to the last Sunday of Advent, and it is also this year happens to be Christmas Eve, or because we've come to the end of the sermon series on Fruit of the Spirit. I haven't figured that one out. I, I probably shouldn't dig too deep into getting the answer to that. But you, will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Uh, this morning we lit the candle of love, representing love, so hope, peace, joy, and love. And usually we have to wait several days before we can light the final candle in the middle, uh, the Christ candle. But that's tonight, 7 o'clock, so be there if you can. But in discussing what God is trying to say to us, to show us about love, we have to clean up a little bit about what we mean by love, what kind of love we're talking about. In our society, we throw that word around so casually. We throw it around applying to all sorts of things that we just really, really like. We love puppies or kitty cats. We love pizza or ice cream. We love pirates or hornets, depending on whether we're in Bluffton or Corey Ross. And get into the pros, it might be the penguins, the padres, or the um, panthers, like pool or ping pong. Remember growing up, my grandparents had a pool table and a ping pong table in their basement. Almost every gathering ended up down there playing one or the other or both. Like, like Phil Collins or Prince. Well, maybe not this group so much Prince, but maybe Tim McGraw. Um, so many love songs out there to make you feel my love are looking for love in all the wrong places. Come back to that one here in a minute. Some of these might be a, should be and as opposed to either or. We love our paychecks or our profession. We love moving pictures, movies, or video games. Just, uh, Ryan O'Neill just passed away uh, here recently. His first starring role was in that early 1970s tearjerker movie, Love Story. Spawned the cultural touchstone quote, love means you never have to say you're sorry. Well, for anyone who's ever been in any kind of relationship with another human being, they know that quote is one of the biggest lies ever told on the silver screen. 
love my parents and love my children. And we can't forget how much we all love our phones. We're so obsessed with them. We were just talking about that yesterday. But here's the problem. While these things are familiar and, we use, and we've used them, we have said those things ourselves about all kinds of different things and others, they don't mean the same, do they? Loving pizza and loving your child is not the same thing. Although on some days, some of you might love your pizza more than your child. <laughs> Much of the New Testament was originally written in Greek, and the Greeks had four different words, main words, to describe uh, these feelings of love that you have for other people. The first is philia. It means love between close friends, a strong bond, a brotherly love, describing feelings for each other. Philadelphia, that's where that word comes from, city of brotherly love, uh, philia. And uh, when I first uh, came to Finley, um, some almost 40 years ago now, uh, we entered a Sunday school class, and our, our Sunday school class was named the Philos class, uh, a brotherly love. And then there's eros, which refers to the feeling of passion or intimacy, a physical as well as emotional. This is where the word erotic comes from, eros. And so uh, then storge, which is a word that significant, uh, signifies the strong bond between a parent and a child or other close family members uh, in that. And then there is agape. Agape is referred to as an unconditional sacrificial love in service to another person, available to all persons. It's a word of action. People that have been through the Emmaus or affiliated with the Emmaus program are well familiar with the word agape. The Latin word for agape actually is the base word where we get the word charity. We give to, to others. In the other three, so we have philia with its friendship love, eros, which is physical love, uh, storge, which is familiar love, and then agape, which C.S. Lewis called the gift of love. In those other three, there's a mutual bond. But here in agape, it's an unconditional, unconditional form of love in which others are not necessarily loving you back. Do these descriptions of agape love also sound theolog theologically familiar to you, to what God has done for us? He loves us unconditionally, regardless of who we are, where we've been, what we've done. He loves us sacrificially, gave his son, and that baby, which ultimately will lead to that cross. And it was given even if it was unreciprocated. How many times has God given this great gift of love that has been rejected or not received. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is all about growing more like Jesus. When we become Christians, God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us and to change us, to develop in us the character of Christ. So one thing we've seen over these nine weeks of delving into the fruit of the Spirit is that it has to do with our attitudes towards other people that we exhibit. Ray Fowler uh, went through a series of uh, examples, uh, and I drew a lot on this sermon series from some of his writings. Uh, but it says, do we exhibit loving attitude or an unloving attitude? Do we exhibit a life that's giving to others, or are we into more selfish pursuits? Do we view others in the worst light, or do we see them in the best possible light? Do we judge or do we give grace? Do we hold grudges or do we offer forgiveness to others? We know if we answered all those questions and what God would want us to do, we know which one we would be on. But the truth of the matter is for us, our human nature so often has us on the wrong side of those ledgers. We too often see love as just a feeling. But to take a hit song from the group Boston out of context, it's more than a feeling. 
Now, anybody old, uh, younger than about 45 will have to Google that one because uh, they were they were big at one time. They had one big album, and that's about it. But they're being so, more than a feeling. Love is more than a feeling. It's an attitude. And we can choose to love others even when we don't feel like it. Because as Christians, love is about a command as well as a choice. Throughout the New Testament, love is highlighted as one of the chief characteristics of Christians. And going a step further, it's not so much even a trait or a characteristic. It's an inner disposition of the Christian's life. Love is critical. It's a critical component of faith. But where does that love come from? Well, it comes from God himself. God is love, and all love comes from him. The Bible describes God in many ways, patient, kind, all-knowing, everywhere present. But only a few places does the Bible describe what God is. One place it says God is spirit in John 4, 24. Another place is that God is light in 1 John 1, 5. And then in 1 John 4, in two different places, in verse 8 and verse 16, it says, God is love. So God is spirit. God is light. God is love. So God is a spiritual embodiment of love, just as Christ was the physical embodiment of love when he was here among us. And not only is God love, but he showed his love by sending Jesus to us. 1 John 4, 9 and 10 says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We see that love is an action. And true love involves sacrifice <clears throat> and is wholly focused on the other person. So not only is God love and he proved his love, he wants to develop his love in our lives. Continues on in 1 John 4, 11 and 12 by saying, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love another, one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. In other words, people may not be able to see God, but they can see God in us when we allow God to develop his love in our lives. One of the strongest ways to be a good witness for Christ is when we display the fruit of God's love in our lives. When we started this series, we used uh, Paul's list of the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians chapter 5. Remember that? And the first one is listed. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. The very first one. That's not an accident. Because it contains all of the other fruit within it. Patience, kindness, self-control, all the others. Love comes first. Comes first. And the more we have love, all the other fruit will develop within us along that. Jesus tells us it is the greatest commandment. Matthew 22, 37, 39, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is Jesus talking. He's telling us the two greatest commandments involve love. Love with God and love with each other. And that's not a coincidence that forms a cross. And not only is it the greatest command, but as Dwayne read earlier and from 1 Corinthians, said, and now these things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. That is because faith has to do with the present. Faith will eventually become sight. 
And hope has to do with the future, but that will ultimately be fulfilled. But love, love is for all time, and it continues for all eternity. So what can we learn from God's example of love? Well, first, love takes initiative. Love takes that step. Romans 5, 8 said, God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't send Christ to die for us after we got our act together and after we gave our confession to God. It was while we were still sinners, while we were still a mess, he showed his love for us. Casting Crowns is a contemporary uh, Christian group has uh, sung a song that's actually written by Matthew West called Love Moved First. Love Moved First. If you are able to make it this evening, you'll hear a little bit more about that. But love takes initiative. It also meets the needs of the one receiving it. God saw our need for a Savior, and so he sent Jesus to meet that need. We, in turn, need to see the needs of others and try and meet them. We might see a material need and try and meet it. That's why we collect things for the caring cupboard for Christian Clearinghouse. That's why different times throughout the year we've collected different things that we donate to people uh, or the, the different charities. But don't forget that in addition to the material, what a person might need might be something more just a bit of our time, a listening ear, an encouraging word. And that may make all the difference in the world to some people, given at the right time in the right way. It could mean the world to them more than any material thing we could possibly give. Love takes initiative. It looks to meet the needs of others, and love forgives. Forgiveness is as much, if not more, about ourselves than the one being forgiven. So let's put that burden down and have such control over us. You see, too often we say we're a forgiving person and then we qualify it by saying, sure, I'll forgive if dot, 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 dot. Fill in whatever you want. That isn't unconditional love. That's conditional love. Forgiveness will only be given if that thing is done. It's not how God operates. God says, sure, I'll forgive, even if that whatever does not happen. You see, God didn't require our apology before he acted to forgive us of our sins. For love acts, as said before, it's a commandment. It's something that we need to do whether we feel like it or not. So it takes initiative, it looks at the needs of others, it forgives, it acts, and finally, love is the ultimate. Love is not only first, but it is also the final and ultimate priority. As our scripture today said in 1 Corinthians 13, the first three verses, if I speak in tongues of men and angels but don't have love, just a gong, a symbol, just making noise. If I have the gift of prophecy and fathom all mysteries, if I can move mountains with my faith but have no love, I'm nothing. If I give all the poor, all that I have to the poor and, and give over my body to hardship but don't have love, I gain nothing. So, friends, it is for us to grow in love. And how do we do that? I think the most important thing that can help us with our attitude is meditating and focusing on what God's love has done for us in Christ. As we quoted earlier, John 3.16, For God so loved the world. God so loved the world 
that he gave his son. Now, we you were very kind and blessed me with, the, uh, with Christmas, and we've shared uh, how much over the years uh, that I've been here together, and you for many, other, many more years, shared what important the church family means to you in your life. And that's, that's wonderful. And I can certainly say, stand up here and say, I love each and every one of you. But if I'm also brutally honest, if you were to say that it's going to cost me the life of my, one of my daughters or my grandsons, well, I love you. Not quite that much. Not quite that much. God didn't withhold that. What he does not ask of us, he gave. And if we can focus on what God has done, if he has that love, much love for us, maybe that can help us resist our natural disposition to self-centeredness. And we can ask the Holy Spirit to develop that fruit of love in us for other people. Because when we grow in love, we are growing to be more like Jesus, and others will see him through us. Just remember, we may be the only Jesus some people will ever see. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we are humbled by the fact that you love us so much that you would not only send your son to be a babe in the manger for us, but to go forward and be the sacrifice for our sins so that we could someday be with you in a way that we could never earn ourselves. We could never be good enough. We could never do enough. We could never make it on our own. And you saw that. And so you sent Jesus for us. And if you love us that much, how can we not love others? Help open our eyes and our spirits and our hearts to those opportunities all around us in this world where there's so much hate and unloving attitudes that we can show a little bit of your love to them and bring your light into this world. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You please join me in our closing hymn, Joy to the World. It's found on 246, so the words are on the screen. Please rise if you are able.
And now, until we meet again, hopefully tonight at 7. Place your trust in God, for God is with you. Listen carefully for God's loving whisper in this time. The words will give you healing and hope. Go in God's peace and love, which will always surround you and keep you and be joyful. Amen. Don't forget if you have